वेलकम टू साक्षी टीवी स्पेशल इमिग्रेशन टॉक शो विद अटॉर्नी मिस्टर चांद परवदनेनी फ्रॉम एसपीबी लॉ फॉर्म आप प्लीज नो दैट साक्षी टीवी नाउ हैज फोर इमिग्रेशन शोस एवरी वीक ऑन ट्यूसडेज विद मिस्टर श्रीनिवास कवेटी ऑन वेडनेसडेज विद प्रशांति रेड्डी इन इंग्लिश ऑन थर्सडेज विद मिस्टर चांद परवदनेनी एंड ऑन फ्राइडेज विद बानो इंद्रा प्लीज टू नोट आस्क योर क्वेश्चंस इफ यू आर एन इमिग्रेशन अटॉर्नी एंड वुड लाइक टू जॉइन आवर स्पेशल शोस Please email us at usaidsakshi dot com or call us at eight double six seven two five seven double four one. If you are an immigration attorney and would like to join our special shows, you can also email us. Um, SPB Law Firm dot com side needs no introduction, but if you need any information, you can definitely log on to that form. Mr. Chan will be more than happy to help you out. Ah, uh, so Mr. Chan has been, uh, you know, we've been uh, doing ah uh, these shoots. For a pretty long time, and uh, I'm more than happy to welcome him back. Hello, Mr. Chan. Welcome back. Hello, Shwani. Uh, thank thank you for uh, having me over today, and uh, thank you all the Sakshi TV viewers all over the world for joining in and uh, listening to the show. Yes. Ah, uh, so Mr. Parvathini, uh, today we thought we will discuss a little bit. You know, the the questions that we're having that I would be asking are pretty basic, but also very important. Ah, uh, but before we get into that, are there any immigration updates that ah uh, we will have the viewers would want to know ah uh, before we get onto the topic? Sure. Ah, uh, so on the employment based immigration side. the h1b filings have started this month and uh, right now all the companies who are doing the first time h1b filings uh, for the cases that got selected in the lottery last month so they are doing it in full swing and a lot of companies have already started filing we have started filing on our side and uh, the good thing is uh, there is time un- until june 30th however uh, we recommend that these filings be done as quickly as possible because any filings done in the month of june in case there is something wrong you will not be able to recover something wrong as in uh, fedex missing or some kind of a delay in the mailing out or something so so that's a major thing so all the h1b filings uh, are being done the lottery happened last month and uh, there is uh, also a talk about second lottery but at this point of time it is too early and uh, until Ju- july we will not know about the second lottery so right now people uh, should continue their filings Uh, there is no guarantee about the second lottery yet and uh, more news about the second lottery will be in july and also on the employment based side the visa bulletin so the visa bulletin for may has come out and it's extremely disappointing for all the indian nationals who are in the queue for a green card so the eb1 dates they have not moved yet and there is also a talk about retrogression in the in the coming uh, visa bulletins eb2 side there is uh, the same thing no change whatsoever eb3 side the same thing no change and uh, there is a talk about retrogression however the only good news is by the time the october bulletin is back more than likely the retrogression is probably going to be resolved uh, however at this point of time things don't look too good on the employment based immigration side based on this month's uh, visa bulletin Yes. Uh, so, Mr. Parathini, let's get on to the topic. Uh, let's talk about the, uh, you know, when students come uh, to USA. So, let's say an immigrant student from India has come on an F one visa and they want to apply for an H one B. So, when do like typically students change their status from the F one visa to H one B visa? And also, is it different for students for when they're doing their bachelor's, master's, and PhDs? Because you know, a lot of students some go for their bachelor's, but also some also do their master's and their PhDs. So, where what is the actual correct time uh, for people to get the, uh, to convert it to an H one B? Sure. So m- most of the students typically they used to come for their master's program in the past, but uh, lately what we are seeing is it's not only masters. We are seeing a lot of people directly come for their bachelor's program. We are seeing seeing a lot of uh, people coming for computer science degrees, engineering degrees right at the bachelor's level. The bachelor's is typically a four year program, and master's program typically is one to two years. Majority I would say is still. the masters they do their btech or engineering or uh, their bachelor's program back in india and uh, if those people come out to us it is anywhere between one year to two years so that's for their uh, masters program and depending on whether they're coming for their masters program bachelor's program or their uh, phd they everybody gets something called opt so opt is 
a kind of a feature where people can finish their studies but they still maintain their student status but they can start working for uh, uh, companies in the line of their study so that is a very important thing so normally what happens is people come to study whatever they are wanting to study whether uh, it's a btech or it's a bachelor's program masters program or phd they finish that program and a lot of them are able to get jobs and those people they get jobs under their opt status which is still student status but uh, gives them an opportunity to work and during that time what normally happens is the companies like their work and the companies want to retain them and for them to retain them the companies have to sponsor the h1 so what that means is these companies they are filing for their employees uh, who are in student status in the h1b lottery uh, the big caveat is they have to get selected in the lottery and a lot of people don't get selected in the lottery the very first time just because uh, there is such a huge demand for h1b if you are looking at what's happening in the last couple of years so what what that means is it could it can take anywhere between 1 year to 3 years uh, once they find an employer and the employer decides to file for a h1b just because of the lottery and the demand for h1bs so overall somebody who's coming for a bachelor's degree might take anywhere between 4 um, to 6 7 years to get onto h1b status once they are in the country and for somebody on masters program uh, once they come into the country about uh, anywhere between i would say 2 years to almost 5 6 years before they get a h1b uh, because a lot depends on are they getting selected in the lottery or are they still waiting for the lottery selection to happen yes yes uh, so mr parvatneni uh, let's talk about the timeline now so let's say somebody is moving to usa you know to do their uh, masters or, or are coming on their f1 uh, by what time can they expect to be a, a successful green card holder now that you know you've seen uh, there are a lot of changes in us uscis you know every day i feel like there's another change every day there are new rules coming so um, le- what is like the approximately time approximate time that you think uh, is like going to happen sure so if we go back about uh, 10 15 years back uh, typically getting a green card for somebody once they're in the country if they find the employ- if they find employment find the uh, find the employer willing to sponsor used to be around 5 years and this is around uh, 10 15 years back however uh, the current timelines are extremely bad and uh, there is a reason for that so there is something called country quota and what country quota does is they can issue only 7% of the green cards the entire green cards for one single country so what that means is uh, there are technically there are 140000 green cards available per year so every year us is allowed to give 140000 green cards overall in the employment based categories but when it comes to india india people who are born in india can only get 7% of that quota because there are uh, country quotas and in the last 10 15 years what has happened is uh, there are a lot of people who are born in india and who are finding sponsorship finding employment and finding employers willing to sponsor them and because of this what happened is uh, the queue has increased too much and there is a huge backlog and unfortunately even though we have 140000 green cards indians because of the country quota they are limited in how many green cards they can get what that means is if somebody is born in pakistan somebody is born in bangladesh or any other country other than india or china they can get a green card very very quickly but when it comes to indian uh, nationals they unfortunately have a huge backlog and right now some of the people some some of uh, the media outlets they're predicting as much as 50 to 100 years of a wait time that's assuming rules do not change but again if rules change or something happens maybe people will get faster uh, but if you look at what is happening this year so we are in 2023 and uh, if you look at 2023 and 2022 people who have applied around uh, 2011 2012 are currently getting their green cards so we can say about uh, 10 years so 10 years right now but uh, for somebody who is freshly applying today uh, unfortunately the rules don't change it might be 50 to 100 years before they get a green card under eb2 or eb3 category and that being said there are various bills out there and there are various uh, uh, proposals out there to speed up things uh, we don't know when things will change but uh, right now the queue is pretty bad 
and the main solution is if they remove country quotas or do something else uh, things could move faster but if not i would say 50 to 100 years uh, at least uh, based on the current statistics okay okay uh, so uh, mr prathini when i was just you know checking up with the questions and everything i just got a doubt uh, because uh, you know i was just like researching and i found a lot of you know not just indians a lot of people they go to usa uh, and they try doing that phds because there are so many great universities out there so when people are doing their phds are they still on an f1 visa or because i have phd is like pretty long process like you have to study for 7 to 8 years so what is the whole situation with phd students so so the phd students have some better opportunities in terms of getting a green card and the reason for that is uh, the doctoral program the phd program is uh, like one of the highest academic achievements that somebody can get it's, it's the ultimate uh, academic achievement that one can get and us recognizes that so there is a category in employment based uh, visas called eb1 uh, however not everybody that does a phd qualifies but if somebody is doing a phd somebody is writing a lot of research articles and those research articles are uh, reviewed and used by a lot of other people they are cited by a lot of other people so there is a category called eb1 and eb1 is for uh, ex- people with extraordinary abilities or some highest level of achievement so yes phd takes a long time anywhere between 4 to 7 years probably but if the phd program during the phd program if somebody has done very good work very good work that is cited by a lot of other uh, peers and colleagues they can utilize eb1 category so eb1 category right now indians in uh, 2022 are able to get a green card and eb1 category most of the time stays current for india so what that means is if somebody uh does the phd program uh, with a lot of papers uh, publish a lot of papers do some outstanding work phd plus some, some outstanding work would put them under eb1 category and what that means is people can get green cards a lot more quicker and uh, the reason for that is phd program is very tough and uh, the research that they do it benefits the society as a whole and that is what somebody has to document what they have done during the phd program and how it is helping the society and by doing so a lot of people do qualify under eb1 category and uh, people are able to get their uh, green cards a lot more quicker through eb1 so phd people there are still some good avenues but uh, employment based majority of the indians typically go under eb2 or eb3 if it's regular uh, it kind of work but anybody with extraordinary abilities or uh, there are some categories under eb1 where people can still get their green cards very very quickly yes uh so uh, mr parathneni uh you know usually i think this is the most common way a person uh you know who comes on their head f1 you know as a student then they become a successful green card holder or you know someone with uh, you, you know a citizenship uh, that is far later but you know based on your experience you've been working in this field for so long so what is like the whole process can you just like summarize it up uh, and how long will this whole process uh, take from be- uh, coming as a student and becoming a citizen sure uh, and again i think uh, if we went like 10 15 years back things were a lot quicker uh, but nowadays because of the backlog the visa backlog for india uh, things are a little bit slow but in general we do see a lot of uh, indians becoming us citizens and last year we saw a record number of indians apply for uh, becoming us citizens uh, and the challenge is once somebody gets a green card it's a very smooth process so the rule is somebody becomes a green card holder if they wait for 5 years they become us citizens so the entire challenge is if somebody who's becoming a us a green card holder today all they have to do is wait for 5 years they're eligible to apply for citizenship immediately apply for citizenship so once they become a green card holder it is very easy and to become a green card holder for indians if somebody still qualifies under eb1 the process is probably still quick if it's eb2 eb3 the new set of people the new people who are just entering the queue probably will take a long time uh, but somebody who's uh, becoming a green card holder right now probably came into the queue 10 years back so whoever is getting a green card in 2023 2022 
their green card their process started probably in 2011 12 uh, time period so for those guys they get a green card wait for 5 years apply show that they have not done any crimes they have always been a model uh, a citizen in the modern uh, a person in the society uh, no crimes medically everything is good no crimes uh, typically the citizenship is a very straightforward process and us so they also encourage people to become citizens so if somebody is a green card holder they want people to become us citizens they want to co- contribute to the civic society so they don't create hassle once somebody becomes a green card holder so somebody becomes a green card holder in 5 years um, they should uh, they have a very smooth process so the only challenge is getting to the green card stage and again the challenge is more for indians and chinese because we have a backlog so the rules are all the same the only thing is it is just that uh, the rule that says a, a single country can get only 7% of the green cards every year uh, under employment based category that is what is causing this challenge and uh, we we just have to hope that rules might change down the line and the things will become smoother again because things are not this bad 10 years back it's just in the last 10 years or so uh, that this uh, backlog became so large yes uh, uh- Mr. Parathini, let's talk about uh, people with their H-1Bs. So let's say that one has gotten their H-1B. So how long is the H-1B valid? Uh, by that means, how long can they legally stay in the country? So somebody who gets H-1B. So whenever somebody gets a H-1B approval, typically it is for three years at a time. So the, the max that uh, the government, USCIS can approve a H-1B case, it's for three years. however there is another rule so somebody can uh, change employers keep extending their h1 and they can do this typically for a maximum of 6 years so the rule is somebody can stay in the country only for a maximum of 6 years that is the general rule and there is an exception and uh, the exception is even though 6 years is the maximum that somebody can stay on h1b in the country if that employer sponsors a green card so if they start the green card process and they come to a certain point so even though they don't get the green card they come to a certain point then they can keep extending their h1b so after 6 years their green card process should have been started and there are certain steps so within that green card processing steps their employer has to complete a certain amount of steps and if those steps are completed uh, th- then somebody can keep on staying in the country on h1b as long as they don't get the green card their their date is not current so Uh, the general rule 6 years but uh, for somebody like uh, uh, someone who's born in india because the dates are not current for the green card even though the employer has done their part the green card cannot be issued however they can still stay back in the country showing proof that uh, the green card petition the i140 has been approved so they can keep continuing it as long as they need till they get their green card yes Uh, so, Mr. Parathini, um, this is the situation that I'm going to be saying. But I think this is a very common situation. Also, uh, what happens is that you know somebody uh, comes on an F1 visa and then they get their H1B successfully, and they want to probably move back to India. You know, stay there for a couple of years, and then they're like, okay, no, I want to move back to USA, and then they come back to USA. So, in that means, uh, will let's say within b- before the span of three years, um, will they have to go through the H one B lottery again to successfully or legally stay back in uh, USA, or do they have to uh, restart the whole process again? Uh, so, a lot of people, so they come to US either on F one visa, and sometimes they go to India after they get their F one, or sometimes they get H one, work in the country for like a year or two. and uh, for various reasons maybe family reasons maybe they're getting a good job in india because right now if you see in india even in india the it opportunities are very good in some very good companies so i'm seeing a lot of people they decide to go back to india uh, even though they have a h1 here and work for some years in india so the good thing is if somebody has a h1b approval some kind of an h1b approval and they decide to go back to india or any other country work for a few years Uh, abroad there is a rule that says if they ever want to get back onto h1 if they do find a us employer they don't have to go through the lottery again that that employer new employer can directly apply for h1 it, it is something called cap exemption 
and they can just move back if they ever want to move back to us so they don't they don't really have to go back into the lottery they don't really have to wait until march april to go back into the lottery and file their new h1 all over again so the good thing is if somebody does want to move to india for a few years or move to some other country for a few years after working in us on h1b there is a good chance that they might be able to come back without uh, going through the lottery process all over again there are a few minor rules but in general they are cap exempt and uh, they are welcome to find a new employer down the line and uh, come back without going through the lottery yes uh so mr parvathani let's talk a little bit about you know um uh, let's talk a little bit about the green card process and um you know you just said you just kind of gave an explanation about how you know after they complete their h1bs or even during while they are on their h1bs they can start their green card process so when do you think is the correct time first of all my first uh, question is when do you think is the correct time that a person must start their green card processing and also what are the kind of documents that they must you know make sure that they have intact even when they are uh, you know on their f1 visa um uh, your views on these Uh, sure so so in in general because uh, india has such a backlog in getting green cards because the visa numbers are so backlog so my suggestion is if somebody wants to uh, stay back in the country and get a green card the thing is they should not wait they should find an employer who is willing to sponsor their green card the sooner the better the reason is there is something called a priority date so the priority date is a date which will put somebody in the queue so the date the employer files a labor application one of the steps in the green card process so what happens is that is the date they get into the queue so anybody that comes into the queue after them will go after them so the main thing is main thing for uh, people to realize is they should start the green card process as quickly as possible and what that means is they should find an employer because only an employer can sponsor an employment based green card so they need to find an employer as soon as possible that is willing to sponsor them and start the process and there are a lot of steps that are involved which is why the sooner it is started the sooner somebody can get a priority date assigned and uh, they'll be in the queue a little early in the queue what this means is uh, i mean a lot of people think that they have to wait until they get their h1 to start the process uh, that is not true even if somebody is, is on f1 program somebody is on opt working for an employer and if that employer wishes to sponsor their green card they can start the process so the process can start even if somebody is in student status somebody is in f1 program the process can start but the main thing is they need to have a valid employer with a valid and a bona fide job offer and that employer should be willing to sponsor their green card so the sooner somebody finds an employer it is good and a lot of people they don't realize uh, that until very late in their career so they spend a lot of time so they get on h1 and they spend 3 4 years 5 years on h1 before they realize that they have not even started the green card process so our advice is start it as quickly as possible and uh, if you find an employer that is willing to sponsor you uh, let them start the process and let them follow all the rules because that's a that's a very lengthy process that whole green card process that the employer has to undertake so get the process started as quickly as possible you'll get in the queue quickly which means there is good chance that you'll get out of the queue quickly and another uh, small thing if somebody has an uh, i140 and i140 means uh, the employer has uh, started the green card process and got an approval so if that part is done even if somebody is on h1 visa their spouses their uh, spouses can apply for employment authorization so their spouses can actually work in the country on h4 status if that part is done so sooner that gets done sooner their uh, green card process gets done more likely their spouses also will be able to work in the country yes uh so um so parathini let's talk a little bit about you know um the um f1 visas so what happens is usually a lot of students when they are going they major i i'm first of all i think it's very important that people know that uh, usa is a federal type of government and that every state has a different rules and or uh, rules and regulations so that actually applies for a lot of different things so 
uh, usually, you know, when kids are going to uh, the majority of places that they want to study is either California, they want to go to Texas or they either want to go to New York. So how important is it for students with F1 visa to understand that, okay, listen, every state has different uh, rules and what are some common rules and regulation change that are pretty different from each other according to you as an attorney? Sure. Uh, so uh, that is a very good point. So US, we have a federal system. So what that means is in a, in a federal uh, system, so you have the federal government, which is which we call it as the central government in India. And then we have uh, the local state governments and uh, they have separation of powers. And what that means is there are some places where the federal government does not interfere with the state government. Uh, and to give an example, uh, so we have things like divorce law. So if somebody wants to get a divorce in Texas, uh, the Texas courts can decide if they want to make somebody wait for six months or two months or one year. Uh, etc. So they can frame their own rules about divorce. Uh, for example, crim criminal law. Say somebody does a crime. Somebody went uh, and uh, murdered somebody. Texas as a state can decide if they want to give death penalty or uh, abolish death penalty. The central government cannot say for this crime, your state has to give death penalty. It is up to the state. So anything uh, like criminal law, uh, it is up to the state government. Anything up, uh, uh, depending on the property. For example, uh, somebody owns property in state of Texas. Uh, typically, it is Texas that will frame the rules, not the federal government. And uh, uh, there are certain things like property, uh, criminal law, family law, where the state will decide what is happening. For example, uh, taking drugs, for example, marijuana. So, for example, state of California. State of California says you can consume marijuana. So marijuana, which is weed, it's a drug. Uh, basically, we call it ganja in India. So it's a drug that uh, in state of Texas, in state of Texas, somebody can go to jail if uh, they consume marijuana, if they have marijuana in the car. But in California, that state said it is legal. So if somebody consumes marijuana, they take it in their car, it's completely legal. The police cannot do anything. And the central government, so uh, in US, so we have a federal law. According to the federal law, according to the central government, consuming marijuana, carrying marijuana, it's a crime. It's a federal crime. However, in state of California, because it's state of California, they cannot arrest somebody because uh, in criminal law, it is the state government that will decide. So even though the central government says it's a crime in state of California, people are allowed to buy marijuana, allowed to consume marijuana. State of Texas, we in state of Texas where I live, we decided that it's a crime. So in this state, uh, it's, a, it's a crime. So you can get arrested if that crime is committed. Uh, so. And for uh, Indians who are coming to U.S., it is very important to know the state laws because uh, as an immigrant, as an immigrant on a visa, non-immigrant on a visa, one has to follow the state laws, one has to follow the central government rules, and they also have to follow the local city rules. Sometimes the local cities will have some rules. So it is very important that all rules are followed uh, because when somebody is a U.S. citizen, some rules are different. But when it comes to uh, non-immigrant. Immigration law is completely under the purview of uh, the federal government, the central government. So anytime anybody is on a visa in US, they have to make sure that all the federal government rules are honored, are adhered to. Uh, so they cannot say, hey, in the state of California, they're doing it, so let's do it. Because uh, when it comes to a non-immigrant, they have to follow all rules, the central government as well as uh, the state government rules. So it's a little confusing, uh, but however, even India, for most part, is uh, a country that follows federalism where the states have strong rights, the central government has uh, strong rights. Uh, but here, US, it's a little bit different. So it's a good thing for people to be aware of these differences and these rules, because doing so will make sure they never get into any trouble. They're always following the rules. They're always compliant and uh, help them in the process. Yes. Finally, uh, Mr. Parathini, can we talk about the I-140 and its significance for the green card process? Sure. So I-140 is basically the I-140 stands for immigrant petition. And uh, this immigrant petition is a petition that is filed by an uh, employer. So, for example, Google or Microsoft. So these companies, what they do is for any foreigner whom they want to sponsor for a green card, they have to file this petition with. U.S. Immigration Services. 
and uh, this immigration petition if that is approved by uscis the immigration services body what it means is the government is okay to grant the green card and now the employee has to file for their uh, green card when the dates are current because like i said there is a queue and the government every month will publish a visa bulletin and that visa bulletin will tell if their line in the queue is current or not so this i140 is an immigrant petition that the employer will file but all the employer can do is they can notify the government and if the government gives them that approval now the burden is back on the employee to wait until the date becomes current so the i140 is uh, the immigrant petition and if it is approved it means that the government has no problem in granting a green card when the dates become current when the when the time is uh, up and when they're in the in when the queue is current that employee can get the green card uh, pretty quickly so that's that i140 step is a major step and an approval means us government is okay with the company sponsoring some employee for the green card yes sure uh thank you again mr paradini for tuning in we had such a great show thank you again to the viewers for tuning in uh you're watching sakshi tv with me shivani raj thank you